Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video. So today marks the official start of the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season, and we're likely to kickstart the season with tropical activity as uh, during the next couple of days we could see a disturbance develop into a tropical cyclone. So the season is just here, and if you're in portions of Central America, Western Cuba, Florida, and the Bahamas, you have to be on alert right now because it is likely that a tropical system is going to be forming. And so before I go into details, Okay, so first things first, we are taking a look at the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center. And so we're seeing that we have two disturbances. One of them is highlighted in red, which means that it has a high chance to develop, and one is in yellow. And so this first one here is located just over the vicinity of the Yucatan, and that's the northern Belize right there. And this is going to be accelerating to the north-northeast during the next couple of days and likely to intensify into the first first tropical cyclone of the season and we also have this other disturbance so this one here is given a 10% chance to possibly develop so 10% through the next 48 hours and 5 days and so even though the chances are very low right now sometimes we typically have systems that might have a very low chance at first uh, of developing and then they rapidly develop into something especially subtropical cyclones so uh, we'll keep we'll be keeping an eye on this but as of right now this is not really a threat to land but back to that first disturbance right there and so regardless of this developing or not it is going to be bringing a lot of rainfall to portions of central america especially the yucatan uh florida the bahamas and portions of western cuba so guys please if you're in any of these regions be aware of this rainfall threat let's take a look at it on satellite and we're seeing here that we have some of these areas of so much convection right now so a lot of rainfall a lot of moisture in the vicinity of the caribbean that land interaction might pose a problem or limit the rate at which intensification occurs with it and we also have some strong upper level winds in the region but regardless though it is likely that we will see some development of this and i wouldn't be surprised if this becomes a tropical cyclone before this week ends now let's go ahead and take a look at sea surface temperatures in the region and we are seeing that things are pretty warm especially in the region where uh, we have that disturbance so we're seeing that we have some 28 29 degrees celsius thereabouts so conditions are mainly conducive to enable intensification or development of this system and so guys, now let's go ahead and take a look at what the models are expecting in terms of that total rainfall between now and Sunday. So first up, we have the GFS model here. And so uh, the different colors, they indicate different amounts of rainfall in inches. And to the right side of your screen, that is uh, the key to understand this map. And so we're seeing that we have some areas, that narrow area where we're seeing some yellows, uh, probably up to about 12 14 inches of rainfall probably even more than that uh and we're seeing that southern florida is highlighted within that region right there so gfs is expecting quite a bit of rainfall but for most of the surrounding areas let's call it two plus inches of rainfall so mainly for cuba uh florida and the bahamas area and then as for the icon model icon is showing that we won't have that much rainfall that gfs is showing but still showing a lot between now and sunday for the regions that i I just mentioned guys however the general consensus is that a lot of increased rainfall is expected within this region and as I speak about that the climate prediction center is actually expecting that as well because here we have uh, these areas that are highlighted in green those areas are expected to have above average rainfall and then that red is where uh, that signifies tropical cyclone formation so regardless of us having development or not these areas are likely to experience a lot of heavy rainfall and so this is going to make flash flooding a possibility especially in low-lying areas so uh, if you know that you're in an area that's usually inundates whenever it rains it's best to ensure that you have an evacuation plan should in case 
you have to get out because of the rising waters. Hopefully that is not the case if you live in such an area. But this is what is on the horizon. So it's best to be safe than sorry and to have all the preparations in place. And so that shouldn't just be the mode for this uh, system here, but for the entire hurricane season. I mean, this season is expected to be pretty active. No one calling for as much as 21 named storms. That's the entire list of names being used up. And we We've seen that last year and 2020, but uh, even though the season might produce a lot of tropical cyclones and it might be above average, that doesn't mean that uh, a specific area or areas will be targets for these tropical cyclones. We can have an active season and you're in a region that's usually affected and you are spared. However, we uh, it only takes one system. So even though this, uh, maybe a hurricane season is not expected to be pretty active, however, it only takes one storm to be the talk of the town guys so please ensure that you're taking all the necessary precautions and staying safe guys and so uh this is the usual track of tropical cyclones during the month of june and so in this case we don't have a system emerging from the south caribbean but rather the eastern pacific and uh it's likely to be making its way just over into portions of the gulf but eventually crossing out into the atlantic region and so as time goes by uh we'll see what happens with this and of course i will be keeping you updated on this system because it's obviously uh, a very imminent threat to land and it's likely to bring so much rainfall so i'm just hoping that everyone in the path uh, of the system here stays prepared and so maybe this month we will see more systems develop and tell me what you think in the comments down below uh, if you think that we will have quite a bit of storms developing in june or not but this is the usual tracks of our systems, not saying that they don't go out of this zone and come from other areas, such as waves developing from the main development regions. Just that we typically see that a lot during the months of like August going into September and probably October as well. And so now over in the Eastern Pacific, we are taking a look at that ENSO region, which stands for the El Nino Southern Oscillation, of course. And as I said multiple times, if you've seen my previous videos, we are in a La Nina. And so uh, it is highlighted by that by those blue shades just off South America extended into the Pacific Ocean. So that is where we have our La Nina region. And so the blue indicates that we have cooler than normal sea surface temperatures. And that is really what a La Nina is. Whenever we have that Enso region having cooler than normal temperatures, it usually results in more favorable conditions over in the Atlantic Basin for us to see development. And I mean, it is pretty cool right now and so that's the reason we're expecting that this hurricane season will be a pretty active one and so the current value of it is minus 0.795 so that is beneath that minus 0.5 bar so once we have the temperature being lower than minus 0.5 then that means that we're definitely in a la nina but between uh, minus 0.5 and plus 0.5 that is really neutral conditions and then above plus 0.5 is where we have an el nino which is when uh, temperatures are warmer than normal over in the pacific for the enso region right there but we are in a la nina and it is definitely likely that we are going to be seeing an active season almost completely certain right now but as i said we just have to hope for the best out of this hurricane season and if you're in regions to be affected just reiterating that you should prepare for the worst yet hope for the best and if you found this video to be quite informative please leave a thumbs up and of course you can share your thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question i'll try to respond as best and as soon as i can and of course remember to always be weather wise